Hello everyone, we will continue the topic table buffering and in the previous videos we finished with all three types of buffering that is single record buffering, full buffering and generic area buffering. Now in this video we will cover the important points and transaction codes related to table buffering. And these points will definitely help you. Now suppose what is the first point? Whenever we want to stop the buffering of a table. Suppose we have a table and buffering is activated. And we want to stop the buffering of a table. Because we know anyways buffer always store data on the application layer. Now we want to stop the buffering of that table. In that case, always choose the radio button buffering allowed but switched off rather than buffering not allowed. I will go for simple, simple reason behind the same. Suppose this is our order header table. As of now, table, what is the buffering for this table? Fully buffered. Now we do not want buffering for this table. We want to stop the buffering of this table. If you will go for buffering not allowed, compulsory you need to remove this checkbox also. Otherwise, system will give you the error. During the starting itself, we covered this. Whenever you are choosing the buffering type, either we need to go for radio button buffering activated or buffering allowed but switched off. Currently, the table is buffered. We do not want the buffering. We want to switch off the buffering. So never go for this option. In that case, what will happen? You need to remove this checkbox also. What is the best way? Go for this radio button. Whenever you will go for this radio button, buffering will be switched off at that point of time. Buffering will be stopped. But in the future, if we again want the buffering, so we'll simply, simply go for buffering activated. There is no need to remember that what was the buffering at that point of time because this checkbox will remain as it is. So it's a very, very important thing rather than going for buffering not allowed and removing that checkbox. Go for this buffering allowed but switched off because ultimately our target is fulfilled table will not be buffered at that point of time. And this checkbox will also remain as it is in the future. If we think, yes, now the buffering is required, and we can simply, simply choose the radio button buffering activated and fully buffered is already ticked. Now we will go for second important point. Many times, we need to reset the table buffer. Yes, many times we need to reset the table buffer. But never, never use this transaction code slash dollar tap. This is a very critical transaction code because if you will go for this transaction code, then what will happen? It will reset the buffer of all the tables. If we want to reset the table buffer of specific tables, why, why we should reset the buffer of all the tables, then it will highly impact at that point of time. So never, never use this transaction code slash dollar tab to reset the buffer of specific tables. If you want to reset the buffer of one, two or three tables, why we are using this transaction code to reset the buffer of all the tables? We will not use this particular transaction code. It is very critical transaction code. So in that case, how you will reset the buffer? So you can simply, simply go to AL12 transaction code and you all are familiar with AL12 now. 
you can go to AL12 transaction port. You can go to edit. You can go to reset buffer and you can go to table buffer. You can pass the name of the table for which particular table you want to reset the buffer. Suppose simple example. If I will show you one table, I will go to buffer, table buffer, will go to buffer content. I will check if anything is in the buffer. You can see this is the buffer. We want, this is the buffer data. We want to reset the data, buffer data of this table, but never use that transaction code. If you will go for dollar slash slash dollar tab transaction code, it will reset the buffer of all the tables. So what you can do in that case, I want to reset the buffer of only this table. So what I will do, I'll simply go to edit, reset buffer, table buffer. I will pass the table name. This is our table name. I will click on to invalidate. Now, if I will show you the monitor, buffer, table buffer, if I will show you the buffer content, now you can see nothing is in the buffer. We reset the buffer. So this is the way how you can reset the buffer, but never use slash dollar tab transaction code as it is a critical transaction code. Now, if I will come on to the transaction codes, now in this whole, whole series of this table buffering, we put stress on to one important transaction code that is AL12. You are always using this transaction code to check the table buffer, to check the contents of that table buffer. And just now we check the, just now we discuss the transaction code, the transaction code to reset the table buffer is slash dollar tab but never, never use this transaction code, okay? If basis person is using, it's okay, yes, because they want to reset the buffer or if some activity is there, but it should never, never be used by us to reset the buffer of all the tables. Now, if I will go for the summary of this particular video, in this video, firstly, we cover two important points. What is the first point? If a table buffering is activated and you would and you want to switch off the buffering or you do not want the buffering at this in the current situation. So always choose the radio button buffering allowed but switched off. In that case, what will happen? You will, there is no need to remove the checkbox for the buffering type. It is a safer side. If you will go for buffering not activated radio button, system will definitely give you the error to remove the checkbox for the buffering type. In the future, if we require the buffering at that time, we need to think what was the buffering at that point of time. So yes, just always choose buffering allowed but switched off. So at that time, buffering is not at all there and our target is achieved. Now, whenever you want to reset the table or buffer of specific tables, never, never go for slash dollar tab transaction code. You can go to AL12 and the path is you can go to edit, reset buffer, Table buffer, pass the name of the table and reset the buffer. And we have two important transaction codes. AL12 is extremely important. How you can check the table buffer through AL12? We are always, always going for monitor. We are always going for buffer. We are always going for table buffer and we choose the specific options. Now the transaction code to reset the table buffer is slash dollar tab, but it is a very critical transaction code as it reset the buffer of all the tables. 
So avoid this particular transaction code. So that's it in this particular video. Thank you.